Alhamdulillah, Hirabil Alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, amma bara habati fillah, lahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala alihi Muhammad, kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala alihi Ibrahim, minna ka hamidun majid, alahumma baraka ala Muhammad wa ala alihi Muhammad, kama baraka ala Ibrahim wa ala alihi Ibrahim, minna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika and ushrika bika wa ana a'lamu wa astaghfiruka lima al'alamu. Ahabatifillah, I wanted to address something recently, one of the youth, and it's clear to me that it's one of the youth, uh, called me a hizbi. And they didn't bring any dalil min kitabillah, wala min sunnat rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wala ijma'a salaf, wala dalil, no dalil. And so I thought it would be very that it's pertinent that we address this issue because so many people make this claim. And unfortunately, this is a plague and a disease that we have internally, internally in our hearts, but internally amongst our ranks, that there's so many people, they claim Salafia, but they have no idea about Salafia. And in fact, when people say these hit and run comments on social media, 90% of the time they are ignorant. And sometimes you find this from people who've even studied a bit and that they spread facade. And the context is this particular brother said this claim because I don't agree with him because I made my statement about Muhammad Munir, that I said he's Salafi, he calls it the Book of Allah and the Son of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that's what I know of him. And that he makes mistakes like we all make mistakes and we're all responsible for our mistakes but there's a difference between having a mistake and there's a difference between refuted being refuted by a scholar or refuted by a student and taken off the minhaj of salafiyah there's there's a difference and all of these things take the wabit they look at it as, as criterion and kawaid you know principles and a soul that we need to implement in in uh, this situation. Otherwise, there would be nobody to call Salafi, and there would be nobody from Ahl Sunnah. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentions this in detail in his book, uh, which is entitled, Rafa Alam, uh, I've forgotten the name, Rafa Imata Alam, Rafa Alam min Imata Alam, or Kama. Uh, as, it, as, in, as it is entitled. It's a famous book, Imam uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentions about how, according to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu wa all the children of Adam make mistakes or sins, and the best of those are those who repent. But the context is he mentions that for so many different reasons that many of the great imams who are known for the sunnah were not made, people did not make tabdi of them, because they did not follow and follow those mistakes, the mistakes that they made in Aqidah, mistakes in other issues in Minhaj or, or especially Aqidah, we should say, and which is what is more important than uh, issues about Al Asma wa Sifat, great Imams, but no one made Tibdi of them because it wasn't based on their desires. But yet we don't know how to make, uh, refute one another properly based on knowledge mostly. And we don't know how to deal with differences. And what you find often, and unfortunately this is the tarbiya that some of the students have given this, the, the people and du'at, that if you go against us, you're not from us. So if you don't agree with us on so-and-so, if you don't agree with us on Mufti Munir, we made a video on him, we got a statement from Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari, if you don't accept that, or you don't believe that that's the haq, you don't follow what we're saying, then you're off it, you're, you're, you're a hizbi. So this is basically the context of what this individual is saying. Now we should go to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we'll go to some of the uh, statements of our scholars today who talk about this fitna, which has is a disease of ignorance amongst many of the people, even some of the students and even some of the du'at, that it is a sick disease, especially if you have no principles to stand on and you just say someone's a hisbi. Wouldn't it be better to advise that person if you see a mistake? If you see a legitimate mistake, that's number one. Number two, is it just that they disagree with you, that that you, you uh, make a claim about them? For example, my statements about Yasir Qadi or 
Nurman or um, the the other one who talks about the dollar and all this, I forgot his name, somebody Khan, uh, I think he's South African, is based on evidence. I base it on evidence, not because they're from a different culture or they don't take from my scholars or they don't sit with whoever I like, no. But it's based on their usul, their minhads, their calling, their whole da'wah is built on mukhalifa min da'wah to salafiyah, min da'wah to kitab illa wa sunnah to rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the salaf of this ummah. So let's go first and foremost that perhaps this person was unaware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem wa la tajassasu wa la yaghtab ba'dukum ba'dha ayuhibbu ahadukum man ya'kul al-lahma akhihi mayta فَكَرَحْتَمُوهُ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ تُوَابُ رَحِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ And do not spy uh, upon one another or be suspicious of one another. وَلَا يَغْتَابْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا And do not backbite one another. And we'll talk about what backbiting is. أَيُّهِبُّ أَحْدُكُمْ إِنْ يَعْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتَ would one of you, does one of you prefer to eat the flesh of his dead brother? For verily, you, 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 uh, you, you hate that. What took Allah? Then Allah commands you, fear Allah. And know that uh, Allah is the off-forgiving, the most merciful. So it's very important to understand that it is impermissible in Islam. The asl of backbiting someone is muharram. And backbiting a fillah and also knowing that Allah has commanded you to fear Him. He prohibited you from backbiting and He commanded you to fear Him. Now let's see, the one who just goes on the internet and calls this one a Hizbi, this one a Hadadi, this one a Mumayyat, this one a, uh, uh, you know, whatever, whatever Al Qab that they give them, are they doing it based on Dalil? That's what's very important. Because when you do that, you have to fear Allah, you have to have taqwa. You have to fear Allah before you make those statements. Uh, if I'm going to make a refutation of somebody, it's going to be based on something that I fe that I believe in, and it's based I have evidence for. And and the the waj is still loud. The way I use the evidence is correct. That's that's what it needs to be. Those things need to be in place. Not just you just make uh, comments and you curse people and you make takfir of people. This is the way of the khawarij and it's the way of the fasikun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, في كتاب الكريم ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and not, not a word is spoken except that it's witnessed. Except that it's witnessed by the malaika. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala witnesses. He hears all things and sees all things subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is ghiba? So that way we're, we're correct, correct and clear. وَهِيَ ذِكْرَ أَخَاكْ بِمَا يَقْرَى It is Mentioning your brother, meaning a Muslim, with that which he dislikes. And the scholars, they mention, like Imam Anawi mentions that there's a permissible ghiba and there's the impermissible. The asal of ghiba is impermissible. But there are times when talking about ahla bid'ah for a maslaha, to warn the community, to protect people from their harms and dangers, uh, you know, warn against the mistake, whatever the case may be, then there's a maslaha. So this is not really considered, this is not really uh, ghiba, and it's definitely not ghiba madhmuma. It's not the sinful ghiba, but this is actually the person who gets reward if they're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on evidence, based on hard evidence of what someone said and how it goes against the book of Allah or the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the ijma of the salaf, not just based on someone's ijtihad. And again, when we look at the issue with someone Speaking about Muf, uh, Muhammad Munir, then of course is Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari his ijtihad, what he feels is correct from what he heard, what was the knowledge that was given to him from others, was the knowledge sound? That's question number one. Was the knowledge biased? That's question number two. Those are things you need to look into. The Prophet wasallam said, it's better to be quiet. He said it's better to be quiet, letting us know that that is rewarded to be quiet and to keep your tongue silent. If you don't have good to say, then keep silent. If you differ with someone, take it to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. Don't rush to make a hukum on people. And that's what we need to learn, and that's what I wanted to articulate. The Prophet said, if that's not clear enough for you, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, 
when he passed by the graves of some Yahud who were being tormented, he said, So he said that these two people have been punished in the graves and they're being punished for something that the people think is great. That's a great sin or that's big. As for one of them, he used to not clean himself when he urinated or he went to the restroom. And as for the other one, he used to carry tails. You know, he used to do namima, which is like a slander of someone to spread evil around the communities. For example, if you say so-and-so is a hisbi, because you want to spread that and just get as many people against that person, then that is riba. Uh, that's namima. Because your qast, your intention, is to spread evil to spread wickedness or tales about these individuals, not necessarily to warn and so forth. And let's hear what our, our ulama say. If you take from the ulama, you, maybe you just take from two or three that suit your hawa, and then that's on you, between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's hear what some of the kibar ulama, like Imam Fozen said. He was asked, may Allah be good with you. What is your advice for students of knowledge who have preoccupied themselves with takfir? or tibdi' declaring people to be innovators, and following up the mistakes of the Sunnah, uh, of Sunni and Salafi scholars in du'at and have thereby busied themselves away from knowledge, and they claim that they follow the way of the Salaf Asai, or they claim they follow the way of Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan and other than him from the people of knowledge. What a false claim. Here's what the Imam said. He said, this is fitna, this is tri tribulation, and refuge is sought with the law, busying oneself with the shortcomings of the people and driving in the people away from the scholars, the students of knowledge and the callers to a law. This is fitna, and therefore it is not permissible to act according to it, nor to follow those who practice it. What is obligatory is that the Muslims advise one another. Adina Naseha. The religion is sincere advice. What is obligatory is to help one another in al bitter wa taqwa. In, in piety and God and righteousness. What is obligatory is to act upon the knowledge. And as for keeping ourselves busy with so-and-so and so-and-so and, -so and drive people away, this is riba. And riba is a major sin from the, amongst the major sins. It does not rectify anything. It separates and damages. The one from whom we seek a mistake, we see a mistake or a shortcoming, we advise him, either by writing to him or verbally. And as for us sitting down together and backbiting him, then that is haram. And what results from it is a splitting of the Muslims and driving away from the people uh, for the people from the students of knowledge. This act is thereby absolutely impermissible and they have lied against us and against other than us by saying that this is the way of so-and-so. No, we warn against this in our lectures, in our books, and we warn against this way. Yes, this is not from the minhaj of the Salaf. This is not from the minhaj of our ulama who follow the minhaj of the Salaf of Sa'ari. What did our Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Razak, uh, I mean Sheikh uh, Abdul Masan al abad say? He, he said, explaining the one who does not declare the innovator to be an innovator is an innovator. And this is the thing. So just because Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari said what he said, and I don't know if at the end he made tibdi of, of Muhammad Munir, and I don't agree, and so many other scholars don't agree. Why don't you attack Sheikh Salih Suhaimi? Why don't you check, attack Sheikh Abdul Masin Abad, these imams? They're more responsible for knowledge than me. Why is it that you... You selectively, why not attack anybody who doesn't hold your view according to your his, your group, your clique, your crew, your gang? Why not uh, attack them? Here's what Imam Abdul Masin said about these false principles that the youth have adopted. He's, the questioner says, he says, Oh, our Sheikh, you mentioned yesterday that the one who does not declare the innovator to be an innovator is not to be put together with him, meaning the innovator, and that it is not binding upon him to agree with whom he declares him to be an innovator. However, some people of knowledge mentioned that the one who does not declare an innovator to be an innovator is put together with him. So is therefore there a difference in this issue? Is it only semantic or, or uh, semantic difference? Our Sheikh, Imam, Abdul Masin said, the innovator innovating, yes, there are people, people of innovation whose affair is clear. We're talking about clear, we're talking about the, the head of the Mu'tazila and Jahmiya and, and, and of the modern day group, Sayyid Qutub, Hassan al-Banna, uh, people like this, clear, no question. They are far away from the Sunnah and are not from the people of the Sunnah and they wage war against the Sunnah. The Sunnah is on one side of the valley and they are on the other. There is no doubt that the one who does not declare them to be innovators is an innovator himself. Jazallah khair. But as for whom, 
people for whom mistakes occur, from amongst the people of the Sunnah, and something by way of mistake or misunderstanding occurs, then it is not to be said that they are like the others, the innovators whose affair is clear. It is not to be said that they are like them, and it is not to be said that the one who does not declare them to be innovators, that this is this one becomes an innovator like uh, himself. So it's very imperative, Habitat. I wanted to give us these principles in Kauai because now when people say that, for one, this individual's attacked my honor. Okay, so I have a right to come back at him. And I don't think it's beneficial to be silenced. I think it's more important that we make clear from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Message of Allah. And from our scholars, this wicked tarbiyah that's been going on for quite some time that people have developed a sickness and the youth who, who are new, some of them new to Islam, some of them new to the Minhaj Salafiyya, who are ignorant of the religion, they adopt those ways and they begin to speak without knowledge and they incur sin because don't think you can just say these things and you get no sin. And I'm the kind of person, if you come at me and this is a shortcoming I have, I'm going to go to war with you. That's my nature. It's something I have to work on. So if someone comes to me with some false garbage like this, a false attack, and it's not anything legitimate where we can have a, a discussion or a monakasha about, but they just make a false claim, I'm going to come at you. And that's something, again, I have to work on. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good, forgive our evil. Wassalamu alaikum wa sallam.